Hello Maureen, this is your friend Angela Fraser. I'm really excited to share with you and your viewers a few things that are happening in my garden at the moment. I'll show you here my stinging nettle and I decided to consciously maintain a patch of stinging nettle in my garden around my spring flowers that I could pick from time to time to make a pesto or put in a green smoothie. And so you can see this one's quite picked over already because we've been using it for the last few weeks. So the ideal time to pick stinging nettle is when it's about five inches tall. And the best time to do it is actually the morning time at about five o'clock in the morning. And then you know that its properties are the healthiest for your body. The next thing I'd like to share with you today is my new hydroponics system. It comes with an LED light. And then the tray down below is designed so that it can carry water below those pucks all the time. And the pucks wick the water up. So you don't water the plants directly and my seedlings are coming up beautifully. I decided to keep most of my tulips, there's my doggy, hello Bodhi, in pots and containers this year because I had a problem with rodents, rabbits and rats that would come along in the middle of the night and eat all of my bulbs. <laughs> So I'm really happy with my display of tulips this year. They're going to be beautiful. Okay, so at the very back of my garden here, you see I have two stacks of tires. And this is a system we came up with about 10 years ago and it's worked really well for us. So what we do is we put in organic soil and compost and create a really beautiful enclosed space for potatoes. And then we plant our potatoes inside and as the potato greens start to grow, we mound more soil on top of it. And then we keep mounding and the potatoes keep on growing. And we can add more tires to this as well to really stack it all up. So it's a fantastic system and easy to use. These are old tires from our vehicle that we no longer use. The treads are no longer that great. And so you can get some used tires and create your own potato stacks. Another great thing about these tires is that they attract the heat being black and rubber. They hold the heat from the sun in the soil. So we're finding it an excellent way to grow lots and lots of potatoes. I wanted to introduce you to my flock of chickens. I have 15 chickens here on our urban homestead. This is Magic, my handsome rooster. And we get a variety of wonderful eggs of all different colors. We have green, brown, white, and blue eggs and they are absolutely delicious. You can see our garlic is coming up beautifully this year. We like to put down um, some hay on top so that the moisture stays in the soil until they're ready for us to harvest, usually in the first week of July or so. And the last thing I wanted to share with you today is our compost system. And I've got three years of compost in here at the moment, and I'm so thrilled with it. I don't know if you can see, but it's just full of worms. Wow. And what I do in my compost bin is I layer green, brown scraps from the kitchen and soil. And it makes the most delicious, wonderful compost that's all over my garden beds and my plants just love it. Okay, well, Maureen, that's all I have to share for today. Congratulations on your new YouTube channel and thank you so much for inviting us to add our comments and the things that are happening in our urban homesteads at this time. What are you doing at the moment, Maureen? Well, thanks, Angela. That's so great to see another urban homesteader and just how things are looking in their garden and the tips on the compost. That is my goal. I have seen your compost up live and it is absolutely stunning on how many worms. So my goal this year is to really work hard at my compost so that I just bring more of that beautiful natural nutrition to my own garden. So what am I up to today? Hmm, well, let me show you. True story. So here is my original pak choy and bok choy. I got hit with an epidemic of great proportions of aphids. Oh! So sadly, a lot of my 
choice got hit. I've been using the Castile soap with a little bit of essential oil in it and some olive oil. Uh, so all of these in here, I, you know, I'm a, I am one that will just go, I will let you live. You know, I, I've scrapped a few, uh, you know, I do a lot of aphid pulling, but uh, you know, if there is a little bit of green, it's like, come on, little guy, you can live, you may live. But with the issue, I just went and planted more. <laughs> That's the joy of planting. When something doesn't work, just scrap it, plant it again. <laughs> I'm at the stage of doing some potting up. Some things I'm just going to leave in the seedling trays and just plant them directly. So that's kind of what the hope is. But the peppers are up. As are some of the tomatoes. So I am going to be potting those up because it's going to be some time before they need to go out. So here's one thing I am excited about. This is an heirloom tomato from Italy. Um, and it's called a Nona tomato, not because of the originality, but the people that brought the seeds over from Italy, uh, they got them from their Nona. Here's what the beautiful community of growing is like. A woman that was walking past my house last year, she stopped and chatted. She's the one that explained to me with leeks that what you plant this year, you'll harvest next year. So that stopped me from thinking, I can't grow leeks. I've now learned that lesson as well, so which is great. So as we were talking about it, you know, about tomatoes, she goes, oh, I've got these Nona tomatoes. And she said, I'll bring you some. And about three days later in my mailbox was a little envelope with Nona tomatoes. So they are coming up, yay. One of the things I really love about gardening is the community and how people share their expertise, people share their seeds. And so I'm super excited about our tomato season. Not that we eat a lot of tomatoes, but we love to make our own ketchup. So we can our own ketchup. We also make our own salsa. And the salsa we actually use for making taco soup or for just using any sort of spicy thing like that. And this year we would like to take on making some tomato sauces. Chicken interlude. Oh, hello, Peachy Peach. Hello. If I reach out to pet them, then they go away easy enough. Oh, are you gonna go away if I keep touching you? Because as soon as I turn around, she'll be right back. <laughs> Here are some of the brilliant tomatoes that I've got coming. So this is an early girl. And this is from one of my mom's dearest friend, Myrna, and my mom sent it to me. So you go, oh, that's so cool. And then this one here is from Aroma last year that my, my mother gave me. So I saved the seeds. This is called a long keeper. And these ones, you pick them late and they're still green and they'll keep throughout. And this is from my friend, Sheila. Everybody gives me tomato seeds. Then from a dear friend, Shane, who you guys hear me mention here and there in my, some of my videos. Shane, I've known since I was in kindergarten. He sends me a myriad of different ones. So this year, Shane, we're doing Kellogg's breakfast. I'm doing the pineapple and of course the brandy wine. And then this one is from 2020, I do believe. So it's a heritage from my mom again. And, uh, but she's been saving these since 2020. And then of course, there's a couple more from Shane. We've got an orange cherry and the red fig cherry. I wanted some cherry tomatoes this year, so. Oh, hello, a chicken interlude. Are we eating the rosemary ladies? Hi, hi, hi Peach, you're back. Oh yeah, yeah, and take your friends with you. Gertie, do you need me to come pet you? Do you need some pets, Gertie? Oh, I'll get you. And also from my dear friend, Annie, she has the most incredible rosemary bush in front of her yard. And so she's taken off some slips. So I've got some here. So I do have a rosemary, but hers is just so beautiful and healthy. She gave me some of hers. Also, she has like, it's a gazillion foot high dill plant in her front yard. So Annie gave me some seeds for those. So I'm looking forward to that. So I'm going to be making sure I take some of those up for my and mom. Annie actually grew for me from seed because my loofah there, he's just so sad. He's from last year. So I don't know, but Annie grew from seed. Annie has got the greenest thumbs. I think all her fingers are green because everything that Annie grows just comes out fantastic. So she actually gave me one of her plants and also some 
Black Beauty watermelon seeds. These are just fantastic as well. So they're just about ready to get potted up. So well. I think that's what I should be doing today is potting up a few things that they've got their true leaves and, and they're just like, hey, I'm done being in here. So that's what I'm gonna get done today. I just love how um, gardeners just really try to encourage one another and share their abundance and share their knowledge and understanding. It's a, a wonderful community to be a part of, which I'm super grateful for. Have a great day.